Hello, hello again. Uh, we will be continuing our reading of the Player's Handbook for D&D 5th Edition. And today we will be doing the Race Halfling. Doo -doo -doo. They look very jolly. I think, personally. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of mean. Halfling does not get their own little quotey spot of, you know... I'm awesome. Here's where I go in books. No books. No book for halfling. It's not like we all can't think of at least, you know, a series that may feature a halfling. Lord of the Rings. Hobbit. Silmarillion. Things. Stuff. Stuff and things. <laughs> okay. Well, they do, but it's after the, the title goes. Fine, you didn't notice either. <laughs> Alright, page 26. Halfling. Regis the halfling, the only one of his kind for hundreds of miles in any direction, locked his fingers behind his head and leaned back against the mossy blanket of the tree trunk. Regis was short, even by the standards of his diminutive race, with the fluff of his curly brown locks barely cresting the three-foot mark. But his belly was amply thickened by his love of a good meal, or several, as the opportunities presented themselves. The crooked stitch that served as his fishing pole rose up above him, clenched between two of his toes, and hung out over the quiet lake, mirrored perfectly in the glassy surface of Medir, Mare Dualden R. A. Salvatore, the Crystal Shard. So we got our quote. Good. Rep. Represent halflings. All right. The comforts of home are the goals of most halflings' lives. A place to settle in peace and quiet, far from the marauding monsters and clashing armies. A blazing fire and generous meal, a fine drink and Con fine conversation. Though some halflings live out their days in remote agricultural communities, others form nomadic bands that travel constantly, lured by the open road and a wide horizon to discover the wonders of new lands and peoples. But even these wanderers love peace, food, hearth, and home. Though home might be a wagon jostling along in a dirt road or a raft floating down river. Small and practical. The diminutive halflings survive in a world full of larger creatures by avoiding notice or, barring that, avoiding offense. Offense. By avoiding offense. Standing about three feet tall, they appear relatively harmless, and so have managed to survive for centuries in the shadow of empires and on the long and on the edges of wars and political strife. They are inclined to be stout, weighing between 40 and 45 pounds. Havling skins range from tan to pale from tan to pale with ruddy cast and their hair is usually brown or sandy brown and wavy. They have brown or hazel eyes. Halfling men often support long sideburns, but beards are rare among them, and mustaches even more so. They like to wear simple, comfortable, and practical clothes, favoring bright colors. Halflings practice practically ex practicality. Halfling practicality extends beyond their clothing. They're concerned with the basic needs and simple pleasures and have little use for ostination. Even the wealthiest of halflings keep their treasures locked in the cellar rather than on display for all to see. They have a knack for finding the most straightforward solution to a problem and have little patience for dithering. Kind and curious. Halflings are an affable and cheerful people they cherish the bonds of family and friendship as well as the comforts of hearth and home, arboring few dreams of golden glory. Even adventurers among them 
usually venture into the world for reasons of community, friendship, wanderlust, or curiosity. They love discovering new things, even simple things, such as an exotic food or unfamiliar style of clothing. Havelings have easily moved to pity and hate to see living things suffer. They are generous, happy sharing, happily sharing that which they have even in lean times. Blend into the crowd. Havelings are adept at fitting into a community of humans, dwarves, or elves, making themselves valuable and welcome. The combination of their inherent stealth and unassuming nature keeps, yeah, helps Havelings to avoid unwanted attention. I'm sorry, guys. I'm stumbling on this a little bit more than normal. Havelings work readily with others, and they are loyal to their friends, whether Havling or otherwise. They can display remarkable ferocity when their friends, families, or communities are threatened. Pastoral Pleasantries Most Havelings live in small, peaceful communities with large farms and well-kept groves. They rarely build kingdoms of their own or even hold much land beyond their quiet shires. They typically don't recognize any sort of halfling nobility or royalty, instead looking to family elders to guide them. Families preserve their traditional ways despite the rise and fall of empires. Many halflings live among other races where the halflings' hard work and loyal outlook offer them abundant rewards and creature comforts. Some halfling communities travel as a way of life, driving wagons or guiding boats from place to place to, and maintaining no permanent home. We're going to read this little excerpt on the next page here. Affiable and positive. Halflings try to get along with everyone else and are loath to make sweeping generalizations, especially negative ones. Dwarves. Doors make loyal friends. You can count on them and to keep their word. But would it hurt them to smile once in a while? Elves. They're so beautiful. Their faces, their music, their grace and all. It's like they stepped out of a wonderful dream. But there's no telling what's going on behind their smiling faces. Surely more than they ever let on. Humans. Humans are a lot like us, really. At least some of them are. Step out of the castles and keeps and go talk to the farmers and herders that, and you'll find good, solid folk. Not that there's anything wrong with barons and soldiers. You have to admire their conviction. And by protecting their own lands, they protect us as well. Exploring Opportunities Halflings usually set out on adventurer's path to defend their community, support their friends, or explore a wide and wonder-filled world. For them, adventuring is less a career than an opportunity, or sometimes a necessity. Halfling Names A halfling has a given name, a family name, and possibly a nickname. Family names are often nicknames that stuck so tenaciously that they have been passed down through the generations. Male Names Alton, Andir, Cade, Corin, Eldon, Elrich, Finan, Garrett, Lindal, Lyle, Merrick, Molo, Osborne, Perrin, Reed, Roscoe, Welby. Female names. Andri, Bree, Kali, Cora, Euphema, Jillan, Kithri, Lavina, Lydia, Lida, Merla, Neda, Pala, Portia, Serafina, Shana, Tierm, Vani, Verna. Oh. Family names Brush Gatherer, Good Barrel, Green Bottle, High Hill, Hill Topple, Leaf, Lee Gowl. Shut up. Lee Gowl, Tea Leaf, Thorn Gauge, Toss Cobble, Under Bro. Halfling Traits Your halfling character has a number of traits in common with all other halflings. 
ability score increase. Your dexterity score increases by two. Age. Age. A halfling reaches a adulthood at the age of 20 and generally lives into the middle of his or her second century. Alignment. Most halflings are a lawful good. As a rule, they are good-hearted and kind people, hate to see others in pain, and have no tolerance for oppression. They are also very orderly and traditional, leaning heavily on the support of their community and the comfort of their old ways. Size. Havelings have an average of about, yeah, Havelings average about three feet tall and weigh about 40 pounds. Your size is small. Speed. Your base walking speed is 25 feet. Lucky. When you roll a one on the D20 for an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, you can re-roll the die but you must use the new roll. Brave. You have advantage on saving throws against being frightened. Halfling nimbleness. You can move through the space of any creature that is a size larger than yours. Languages. You can speak, read, and write common and halfling. The halfling language isn't secret, but halflings are loath to share it with others. They write very little, so they don't have a rich body of literature. Their oral tradition, however, is very strong. Almost all halflings speak common to converse with the people in whose lands they dwell or through which they are traveling. Subrace. playing in their wheel. Hold on, let me... Subrace. The two main kinds of halfling, Lightfoot and Stout, are more likely, are more like closely related families than true subraces. Choose one of these subraces. Lightfoot. As a Lightfoot halfling, you can easily hide from notice, even using other people as cover. You're inclined to be affable and get along well with others. In the Forgotten Realms, Lightfoot halflings have spread the farthest and thus the most common variety. Lightfoots are more prone to wanderlust than other halflings and often dwell with other races or take up a nomadic life. In the world of Greyhawk, these halflings are called Harefeet or Tallfellows. Ability score increase. Your charisma score increases by one. Naturally stealthy. You can attempt to hide even when you are only obscured by a creature that is at least one size larger than you. Stout. A st as a stout halfling, you are hardier than average and have some resistance to poison. Some say that stouts have dwarven blood. In the Forgotten Realms, these halflings are called stronghearts and they're the most common in the South. Ability score increase. Your constitution score increases by one. Stout resilience. You have advantage on saving throws against poison and you have resistance against poison damage. Sorry that I had to pause so many times in this video. That made that one a little bit harder. I hope you hung on with me and that you will enjoy this video and it will help you. Or at least you'll get a laugh. <laughs> Thank you and like, comment, subscribe. <laughs>